I lost close to about 1.3 crores, as you would have seen on Shark Tank as well. Because all the five sharks invested in our brand. I remember 27 December when we got telecasted. Uh, 28th morning was like a hell. A lot of people commented to me that, Ravi, why did you not take you know the investment at a higher valuation, which probably Ashneer and Namita were willing to give you. I and Anuja always have this uh, feeling that we are not giving enough time to our kids. Firstly, I've been born and brought up in Hyderabad. Uh, we come from a Marwadi family and Marwadis are better known for doing businesses. So I did uh, spend uh, almost nine to 10 years in my family business. During that period for around one and a half year, I even tried venturing into something of my own. I created a digital platform, which was very similar to the likes of Just Dial. Uh, turned out to be a big disaster in my life. I lost close to about 1.3 crores. But more than money, I think I lost my pride there. A lot of people whom I never knew about started to give me free advice, free gam. And uh, eventually, I got, on, got an opportunity to go to move to Australia with my family, with my kids. Seven years I spent there working for some good multinational companies. Nanuja, my co-founder and my wife, again was working for a very large manufacturing company in beverages, handling their compliance and new product developments. And then, of course, um, as you would have seen on Shark Tank as well, dad wasn't doing too well. He was fighting cancer. We decided to come back to India. And when you want to come back to India, Right? So my sister came down to live with us uh, for us summer holidays along with her kids in Australia and uh, that was a time where I was looking for ideas very, very aggressively. And I saw her packing some local ice popsicle brand while she was about to return back to India. And I was like sitting right there casually and like, why are you even taking this? India mein toh sare brand honge. And she turns back and said, Ek bhi brand nahi hai jis pe mujhe bharosa hai. Sab local brands hai. And that was like the Eureka moment. I started to think about it. How come in a, such a hot tropical country like India, there's no ice popsicle brand? Whereas in countries like Australia, UK, Canada, US, being a colder weather, they've got multi-billion dollar industries in the ice popsicle segment. I knew that I'm an F&B guy. And I said, this is it. I wanted to do this. We saved a lot of money to start this project. I had invested my funds in uh, liquid assets, which I could dilute very quickly in Australia. We moved back to India. I said, okay, I'm not going to sell at 20 rupees price point, but I'll sell it at 240 rupees price point. I'll pack it up in a nice box and then sell it to our consumers. So my chances of being successful is going to be higher. And that exactly what happened. We set up a manufacturing unit and uh, we see that completely the box idea clicked. So when Shark Tank happened, we had gone there for three days of uh, rehearsals and shoot as well. Six startups went in a day, zero deals. Four went the next day, zero deals. Even on 1st of November, we were the last startup to go on and pitch. Before us, no deals at all. So the environment was pretty tensed. When startups do not get the deal, they come out crying, they are anguished, they are angry. For us to keep looking at startups, walking out with disappointed was too much of pressure. We walked in there, we pitched it and it turned out to be a great success. When we said all the five sharks to join in and they agreed, I still remember there was claps behind the sets. The entire team of Sony was actually clapping for this deal to happen because even they were under pressure. That there are two deal nahi hai, so how is it going to happen? What are we going to air? And we had those frozen popsicles in the deep freezers. So we opened them up and people started running towards grabbing the ice pops. And there was a lot of celebration behind the sets. Pre Shark Tank, we were a pretty, uh, we were what, uh, six months old company, so we were not really large. And uh, we were doing close to about four, five, seven lakhs at the max monthly. Post Shark Tank, uh, of course, uh, it turned out to be a different story altogether for the brand. Today, looking at around 2.5 crores a month, roughly, uh, on an average that we are achieving. Because all the five sharks invested in our brand. I remember 27 December when we got telecasted. Uh, 28th morning was like a hell because more than 3000 calls came onto our call center where only three agents were answering it. And they were flooded and they couldn't take any more calls. So a lot of people commented to me that, Ravi, why did you not take you know the investment at a higher valuation, which probably Ashneer and Namita were willing to give you. Why did you, you know reduce your valuation? I wanted to say this on your channel that Sometimes for a startup, if you want to take a big leap, you'll have to take two steps back. If I had taken an uh, investment from a from one or two sharks, I would have just been another startup on the ecosystem. 
but because we did that stunt of taking five sharks we are recognized as the startup to have five sharks investing in us right and keeping very close eyes on numbers has made me very sustainable today we are a profitable company because i know that from day one for me profitability is everything if you go crazy in terms of growth and tomorrow if you don't get funding then you are back to square zero you will have to drill down to the unit economics the unit itself unit economic per piece looking as or per uh, per user looking as in our case it is per popsicle i don't talk to my team about per carton per truck load or anything i say per popsicle tell me whether we are going to make profit on a per popsicle or a loss if i am talking about logistics i know exactly how much logistics i pay per popsicle if i know staff uh, staff uh, salaries i know how much uh, salaries are going on a per popsicle basis so that is how we drill down into unit economics today if you look at the startup ecosystem 80% of the startups startups are building a business with only investment investment funds in mind what if the investment stops tomorrow where are you guys heading then you shouldn't get into a startup ecosystem just because you are too tired of your job probably start looking for a better job getting into a startup running a startup growing and making money out of that startup is a very painful process you will have nightmares you will have stress you will have blood pressure you will have sugar you will have every damn disease you can think of now a team of 170 which i run we have to focus on making sure that at the month end we are able to pay salaries we are able to take profit our business is growing our investors are getting value for their money there are a lot of kpis and kris that i'll have to focus on i and anuja always have this uh, feeling that we are not giving enough time to our kids they call it very beautifully that says work life balance there's no balance here it's only work that you'll have to do as a startup co-founders my wife anuja is a saver for any kind of event activity or outing that we want to do she'll always have funds with her i'm most of the time bankrupt <laughs> because i spend personally i focus on spending money in the right way i have already invested in four startups so far and uh, yes i follow a lot of uh, financial youtube channels even yours to gain some insights about where i should be investing in i have invested in lot of uh, in in real estate i've invested in uh, equity your desires are never going to be ending anywhere it's always going to grow from a mercedes you will probably look to have a porsche or you'll want to have a lamborghini but then are you even focusing on growing your revenues if my desires increase and i'll look at increasing my revenue sources also uh, my father unfortunately passed away last year i remember the just two days back somebody was asking me did you get into a in incubator I said my father was my incubator. I did not have to go specially to a B school to understand the lessons of business. My father had these core principles about how he would want to keep the business risk free. First, never do business on credit. Even today, Skippy is more or less 100% advance payments based and that is why I'm getting a good sleep in the night. Second, he did not let me or himself trust anyone blindly. Whether you take couple of days to negotiate and understand that not a problem but take your time whereas my mother had this core principles about how to make a business with great goodwill you need to have be a great listener whether you do a 10 rupee business 10 crores or 100 crores the most important part of your life will be your goodwill never let your goodwill go away because that will allow you to grow further whether the first one is not successful or not doesn't matter by the end of this year we'll have six to seven new products coming in the skippy umbrella brand and will be a full fledged FMCG FNB brand actually in the market coming financially at 23 24 i think is going to be much more bigger for us